It's Wednesday, January 15th, 2014. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, Space Dandy. Let's do this. Also known as the third anime to save anime. <laughs> That's a lot of anime saving anime. You think, it, you think it'd be saved by now? It wouldn't need any more saving. Yeah, well, apparently the anime industry is flush with money and everything's going great now. Well, I didn't know that. I, uh, I don't I have no idea how profitable any of this stuff is, <laughs> to be honest. At least people are paying attention yep. to, to animes right now. Yep, even though a lot of the people I know don't like a lot of these shows that are kind of the, the mold breakers. Okay. I'm just, I've noticed that. A lot of people are really down on Kill la Kill and Space Dandy. If you don't like boobs, you're not going to like these shows that save anime. I'm more of a they... butt man. The amateur <laughs> is after boobs. <laughs> these shoes are all about boobs <laughs> and nakedness. Every single one of the shows is still, you know. Pig shaped it's men like, wearing clothing to It's mask like you're like you, pigginess. perverts, watching all your moe crap shows that are just about wanking off to little girls, you pedophiles. I'm going to go watch real anime that's not perverted. About in adult any way. women who are really exploited. About a teenage girl who doesn't look that cute with a giant sword who's naked. And well, you can't be my cute woman. Aliens that are naked as well. Okay, so uh, how come none of the girl? Okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so uh, I we skipped a show earlier in the week. Sorry about that. I had a last minute trip to Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha. Uh, Omaha. Never, never been to Nebraska before, and as far as my brain is concerned, Omaha. Nebraska exi- well, Omaha specifically exists as a hotel and one other building that sits through an airport door because I flew out of Newark Airport. The worst airport in, I don't know, the east coast of the United States? I don't know if it's the worst, but it's not a good airport. Name a worse one. A worse airport? Because at least smaller, shittier airports have better food and less of a security line. Newark has all the problems of a real airport, but none of the amenities of a real airport. Uh, I wouldn't really... There isn't even food past security. You're fucked if you go through that line. (laughs) All right. So... I got. I, I basically went to Newark, flew to Nebraska, slept in a hotel, went to a four-hour-long meeting, immediately flew home. Less than 24 hours after I walked out of that plane, I walked back into Newark Airport at the same gate. Mm. That was actually really surreal, and I hope I never do that again in my life. I ate airport food at both sides. <laughs> okay. And let me you tell you. airplane food? Uh, no, there was no plane food, because it's like a... Two and a half hour flight, if that. Mm. It's a really short fr- flight. Nebraska's not that far away. Uh, That's scary. I want to be as far away from Nebraska as possible. Nebraska's not so bad. They they were not in Move the... Move there. Uh, you know what? Nebraska... Well, Omaha is a city. It's about Boston-sized. Omaha. Like, that's the size of that city. There's stuff going on there. There's actually a lot of IT and tech workers. Okay. Yeah. I mean... It's not a city I want to move to because I'd have to own a car, but if my parameters are have to own a car is a deal breaker, not only can I only really live in like parts of Seattle and New York, but the parts are actually kind of small. Like if I go out into Queens or parts of Brooklyn, need a car. Yeah, you live in Flushing, you kind of need a car. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's why we didn't do a show, but I'm back from Nebraska and hopefully I won't go to Nebraska again anytime soon. But on the list of places that I'd don't like Nebraska way low. Uh, there's places I dislike way less than Nebraska. So Nebraska, not so bad. Afghanistan. Uh, lots of places in the United States. I would rather live in Omaha. Somalia. Than, I'd rather live in Omaha than any city that's part of the proper former Confederacy. <laughs> Detroit. I would. R- I would give it 50-50 between Det- uh, Omaha and Detroit right now because uh, Detroit's kind of gentrifying. There's stuff going on there suddenly. Like, very recently. But I digress. So, got any anime news? It's Wednesday, anime day. It's isn't really anime news. This is the best news. Well, this is the news worth talking about. That Of, of the list of news is worth talking about, this is the one most closely related to animes, right? So, what this guy did is he had a booth at CES, right? At the Consumer Electronics Show, which is in Vegas at the beginning of every year where they show off all the electronic goodies, right? Yep. And this this isn't like a convention like PAX or anything. This is a typical, you know, uh, trade show where it's pretty much like, imagine take PAX, 
just the expo hall and only people in the video game business, no video game players, right? So it's like no one's there who's like a person who watches TV. Well, I guess they are, but there are people who buy TVs, sell TVs, make TVs, etc., right? Uh, and it covers all consumer electronics, every category, cameras, r- r- fucking everything, right? I like you had one example. You're like, cameras, everything. Everything. Everything they sell at Best Buy, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> right? If Best Buy sells it, it's at this show. So, of course, one of the controversies is all, you know, booth babes, because they're there and there's a lot of them there. It's like, place, if you're a booth babe, that's where you want to go to get a job. Yeah. And actually, last year... There were a little bit less booth babes than usual, but it's apparently because no one had any money. And this year they had money again, so everyone had them again. And people were like, grumble, grumble, and doing the usual same thing they do every time the booth babe story comes up, which is interview some booth babes, interview some people who hire booth babes, right? Etc. Uh, talk about the creepy dudes who were there. And talk about the. How See, the- you know, a lot of people like to complain about PAX, but PAX actually bans booth babes, and no one else is really following that. Right. But anyway, here's the real. Here's the interesting news story, right? Because it, it's not news so far. So far, it's same old, same old, right? Yeah. Nothing we're talking about. One guy had a booth, and he was an anti booth babe guy, but his company pretty much just always paid for it and made it happen, right? And the people above him, you know, just. You sort of believed that it worked, so they always did it. Nah. Somehow, someone offered him some free space somewhere else. So he had two booths. Huh. So he called up, you know, the staffing people, right? Um, and he, for that second booth, he asked not for booth babes. He specifically said, I don't want anyone who is, you know, hot. I want people who have really good people skills et cetera, et cetera, right? Because you still have to hire people to work the booth. I hope this is going toward the anecdote proving the good point and right. not the cynical so, bad point. Yeah, so he got people, he, they sent him people to work that booth. One of them was literally a grandma. There was no pictures of them. I don't think it was a, a joke like GOG did, right, where they have grandmas acting as grandmas. Nah. It was just, they sent him some people who were, you know, people people that weren't hot people or whatever, <laughs> okay, okay. right? They were normal people. They weren't there for their bodies. They were there for their, you know, human interaction skills, right? And he A-B tested the booth babes in the one booth and the normal people with sa- sales skills in the other booth. And the booth with the booth babes, right, it got... You know, they got contacts there. He measured based on how many, like, contacts they got and, like, leads they got. Because that's what you're there for. You're selling something, right? Yeah, that's biz dev people like to make, they make a really specific distinction between so a lead they had and a, com- a contact. Right, so they had computer systems where people would, like, enter in, like, their contacts and, right, and whatnot. So it was how many did we get at this booth and how many did we get at that booth. So first of all, not only did the non-booth babe booth get, like, double or triple or even more the amount of you know, leads and contacts or whatever, but the ones they got at the Booth Babe booth were really low-quality, shitty people that didn't really, you know, not good quality. The ones they got at the other booth were all real deal, we can make money off this shit. I I can kind of speak to that. And at least his business, which was, you know, the people above him were people who believed in Booth Babes or whatever and wanted to pay for them all the time. At least they were convinced by the data, and I guess they're not getting them anymore in the future, right? Uh, even though those same people believed in them not a few weeks ago. I mean, I'll say straight up, when I go to you know my trade conferences in the financial sector, any booth at any one of these things that has a bunch of that bullshit on it is usually a, a worthless contact to have from my side, the guy walking around. Mm-hmm. So I actually avoid booths that have big stuff. I'll only go to booths that have big stuff that are also giving away expensive free things. And, <laughs> and I have a fake set of business cards that goes to basically forwards through to Gmail. So if I win something, I can get it. But they will never trace it back to me and my real job and my real name. <laughs> so, yeah, now we have definitive proof of what we suspected, which is that Booth babes don't even help you. All they do is get sleazy guys to come up to your booth and get their picture taken, and they kind of scare smart people away. Well, you know, the traditional... They don't help your business. The traditional wisdom always shines through. The kinds of people you see patronizing strip clubs are the kinds of people you probably don't want to have a conversation with. Right, and also, the place... It, it's, you know, it, it's also probably true. The places that have booth babes are probably people where the product doesn't sell itself. It, it needs some kind of help. 
right? Look at PAX at the booths that tried and failed to have booth babes, right? There's like that energy drink booth. Oh my God, I forgot about them. Right, which they have hot people of all genders there, you know, who are fully clothed, <laughs> but they are not energy drink specialists, shall we say? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I would love to see the person, the kind of person who is like the Red Bull connoisseur. And that Duke Nukem booth, not the highest quality game, you could say. Oh. Needed, needed some marketing help to get sales. Yeah, those booth babes, well, th- there were booth babes at that booth. There were. Packs, but they... For a limited time only. They uh, Yeah, they uh, also... To their credit, because I kind of got pulled into the back of the booth and got to talk to a lot of them, had all memorized a lot of information about the game and all could uh, yeah, play it. Sure, but they don't have the the sales skills, perhaps. Then maybe they do, but you know the other people did. Well, PAX is different because no one, you're not. It's not the same kind of no, sales. No, it's not. Not at no all. one. Valve Software is not thinking. Well, we got a lead that uh, Rim's gonna buy this game on Steam mm. if we email him later. <laughs> <laughs> I want to oh, see a speaking world. Speaking of which, like the Valve, that's how games are sold. The Valve developer conference is happening now. Oh yeah, I, I it, almost wanted to go to that, but I couldn't justify you, going. Well, it's sort of it's like all secret and shit. Like, I know. You're not, it's it's like Pax Dev, but one thing that is not secret about it is that if you went in the goodie bag was a Steam controller, which is not cheap. Those things are going to be like a lot of money. I saw some someone made a pretty apt tweet that's been making the rounds that Valve is basically right now doing the equivalent of handing out muskets in the night to eventually overthrow the king. I was the one who saw that article and tweeted it, and then you just copied what I saw and copied. Yeah, I retweeted your tweet that was from someone else. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, that's how I roll. So yeah, so this is related to anime, right? I got to bring this back to anime. Okay, bring it back. This babe story. There seems to be this assumption among the anime makers, right, that, you know... I guess virtual boobies sell mangas and animes. Maybe they don't. <laughs> I've suspected that for a while. I think they it's the same situation with superhero comics. Even in the these US. new shows that we say are saving anime all have boobies in them. Maybe they don't. Maybe, Maybe they like do. the booth babes. Like, imagine if Kill a Kill didn't have all this nakedness. Like, you'd made the show about something besides. You could still make it just as good, but instead of being about clothing, it could be just be about hats only or something, right? Yeah. It could still be just as good with all the craziness and everything. Would even more people watch it? Well, I'll put it this way. Well, there's that Lowell that was basically anime fans. Wow, look at that deconstruction of clothing, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Non-anime fans. Why isn't that girl wearing pants? That's right. That's exactly <gasps> 100,000% correct. Yep. Every, every anime fan has had that moment where you're watching some show on a subway or on a train, and you kind of pause it and make the window smaller and then start again. <laughs> Sometimes you can't even scroll your Twitter. Yep. <laughs> Especially with some of the people I'm following lately. That's guys. Right. <laughs> guys with your gay porn all over my Twitter suddenly. I don't know who you're following, but I'm not following that. <laughs> I'm following a few people <laughs> recently. Anyway. <laughs> but that what I say when it comes to all this sort of, like, I like a good exploitation film, whatever it might be. For example, Black Dynamite. But anytime there's media that is that has twinges of racism I heard or sexism a Black Dynamite sequel. or anything anything that is bad or untoward, all it does is raise the test by which the media has to be reviewed. Mm-hmm. So some shit Moe show that has this creepy Moe bullshit is held to a higher standard than it has. To, if I'm gonna watch that, it better be fucking incredible. Yeah, it better be the Great Gatsby equivalent. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so in my mind, like a show like Kill I Kill, the exploitation, it it has met so far the higher standard I have held it to in terms of its overall quality. Mm-hmm. But many other shows with the same. Uh, accoutrement, shall we say, <laughs> to use a Sailor Moon term, talents, <laughs> has not lived up to even the most basic test. <laughs> There's a reason we're not watching most of this anime that has come out recently. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, to bring it back to Sailor Moon... There's news that wasn't news, but apparently it's news because everyone saying this was making shit up until now. Okay. Everyone had assumed that the new Sailor Moon anime announced in August last year yep. to air in December last year. Ant failure. Now announced that it's going to air in July, but I'm not super confident in that either, considering we've Is seen... the news that they renamed the series Sailor Moon Forever? <laughs> we have literally seen... No art from this. I've seen pictures of Sailor Moon. Yes, every picture I've seen 
related to this is something that's just scanned from the manga, usually by a fan. Oh, I thought that I saw a picture of Sailor Moon that they drew. Yeah, she looks like Sailor Moon. That's yeah, that's still a picture from the show. There's a picture of I Sailor don't know Moon. if it's from the show. That could just be promotional art. A bullshot. Sure. It's a promotional picture of Sailor Moon that they drew. The people who are animating the show stopped for a minute and they drew a picture of Sailor Moon for the poster. It had been assumed by many people, and we I said this even when we did our how to or our uh, judge anime by its cover thing at Anime Boston, that it appears that it's going to be a reboot that is based very much more strictly on how the manga yep, went. I read the same thing. I, that was that's all I ever thought this was going to be. So I had tried it's, to it's, verify. It could be that. a sequel. I had tried. It could be a sequel actually to the anime. Yeah, after Sailor Stars, do the Crystal Millennium or something. I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, you don't know. I re- <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything about Sailor Moon. <laughs> Who's the cat? Can you name the cat? Moon Moon Luna. All right. It's also because it's the same as uh, you know. You know, there's two other cats. Uh, there's one that's sort of, the, the main one's black, it has a moon on its head. Yep, she... And then there's one that's sort of dark purple that has stars on its butt, right? Okay, yeah, I'm surprised, I'm surprised that this, that cat is the one you know second and not the other main cat. I don't know any other cats. Artemis, the dude. There's a dude, okay, what does that one look like? He's a white Luna. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought, I just thought there was the black one and then the purple one. He shows up when Sailor V, aka, uh, Sailor Venus shows up, because Sailor V is actually a superhero on her own. Before she finds out she's a sailor, like straight up. Like she uses her powers and has a cat kind of like Sailor Moon and has a TV show about her that she's in, but she's also a real superhero. So Sailor Moon, the girl, is a fan of Sailor V and then meets Sailor V and it turns out that Sailor V is for real a Sailor Scout and also a superhero. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, let's not watch that show. I already did. <laughs> Too late for you. So I tried to find more information about the new Sailor Moon. It turns out that was just a giant clusterfuck of people making shit up. So it was all lies. It's not a reboot. So that was people making shit up, but being very good at guessing because it was announced scant days ago officially that this is not a sequel. And is not a remake of the anime, but a new reboot adaptation of the manga. So that's what. So I'm guessing. So everybody guessed right. We probably didn't guess. It was probably known. But I can't figure <laughs> There's out. There's no way people could have guessed that. It all. I'm, uh, I read it many places. Having read a bunch of the manga and seen the original Sailor Moon all the way through, including the three movies and the special. Oh, you don't want to see a reboot based on the manga because that's gonna be bad. Uh, no, I'm saying I would have made the same guess. But I wouldn't have coached it in terms of this is what the studio said. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so now we know. We'll see if it actually premieres in July. There's like a dub cast already It'll set up. It'll premiere in July. 20. 20 something. 15. <laughs> 16. But. 18. I'm really curious. I really want this to happen. I really want to see it. Because if I had to describe the Sailor Moon manga to people who have seen Sailor Moon, imagine. Green Lantern universe, but with a lot of lesbians. That is what that is like. But is that in shit in volume one? Uh, p- p- it comes in pretty quick. It is Green Lantern, space bullshit. There's a shield around this planet, but then this kind of thing can get That sounds like Star Control 2, shield around the planet. The, yeah, there's shields around the planet. It's good. You got to read that manga. I'm going to make it the next book club. <laughs> no, you can't make a no, manga. No, I'll make the Sailor Moon light mangas, the, or light novels the next book club. No. <laughs> I've got one. The hell's wrong it's with signed you? signed by the author. What is wrong with you? <laughs> but anyway, things of the day. Uh, our good friend Casey Green, known as that guy on the internet. You might not know who he is, but you'll see his stuff and you'll be like, well, oh, that If you guy. don't know who he is, have you read the Anime Club comic? A.K.A. The Truth. <laughs> Gun Show comic. You should read that webcomic every day of your life. Uh... I'm just going to throw you this out there. You can read it before or after you read Dr. Vic Ninja every day of your life. This is a video. Video by the famous Casey Green about the Arshisetzer. I don't... I showed this to some people last the night. Arshisetzer. And one of them was kind of laughing the whole time, like, what is this? And the other one was just shaking his head, like, what is this? <laughs> Not in a good way. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out that at the very end of this, the woman says... I don't need this, and the protagonist, the Arshisetzer, does not say, yes, you need this. He says, I need this. <laughs> Just pointing that out. <laughs> you watch it all the way to the end. You have to. 
Trust me. You don't want to know what your problem is. Really. <laughs> I want to know what the fucking problem is. <laughs> you don't want to know what your problem is. How do you know I'm not going to want to know what the problem is? I know that you're not going to want to hear me tell you your problem is. <laughs> Seriously, guys, this stands alone. Problem's your face. <laughs> My what? Your <laughs> face. Anyway. You got something? Uh, do I have something? Oh my God, the song is like stuck in my head again now. <laughs> so uh, this is a, th- a thing of the day that involves games and technology. Perfect for Wednesday. Huh? <laughs> it has nothing to do with anime whatsoever, unless I guess you count the fact that there was a Mario anime at some point. <laughs> oh so, my God, you're right. I keep forgetting about that. So there was... Uh, this thing was all over the internet. If you haven't seen it, I don't know how you have. You must not internet at all besides Geek Nights, in which case you're interneting all wrong. This should be like uh, the no, last they're, they're thing. They're getting a should... filtered stream of only the highest you're, of brow. Yeah, you're interneting wrong if you're interneting Geek Nights before anything else. Anyway, so uh, what these guys did, it, well, this guy, uh, Master June, I think his internet name is, he took uh, Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. And he hooked it up to some equipment, so it's like, a, you know, for time-assisted speed running, right? Um, so basically, the equipment he hooked it up to had two multi-taps. So it was as if there were eight controllers connected to this Super Nintendo, right? Uh, and he goes into the first level, uh, well, the level to the right of Yoshi's house, right? And he starts doing all this crazy... A.K.A. the third level for people who know how to play that game. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Um, he starts jumping around and doing all this crazy random shit. You know, well, the computer's doing it, right? He scripted the controls. It's He's only inputting controls. He's only pushing buttons on the controllers. He's not doing anything else. You can even see what buttons he's pushing, right? And through pushing these buttons in this crazy sequence, making Mario do all this random shit with, like, Yoshis and all this craziness that happens, it seems like just, like, random crazy hacks and weirdness that doesn't really get him very far in the game. Eventually, I think he activates a P block or something, and the game sort of freaks out. And then the game's like in this menu. And in the menu, there's three options Pong, Snake, and Quit. And if you choose Pong, you play Pong with a Mario head. And if you choose Snake, you play Snake with a Mario head. And I do not personally verify if this is a hoax. This, this is, is all Scott. 100% but- not a hoax because there is a separate video. Uh, which is when this was premiered at uh, Awesome Games Done Quick, right? Uh, which raised over a million dollars for cancer and is like the greatest thing to watch on Twitch TV ever. Um, which is also wh- where they did that Metroid speedrun we just saw. Oh my God. Super, yeah. Super Metroid, right? Oh my God. So, uh, and basically they had a Rob the Robot hooked up to the, you know, to a Super Nintendo, right? And they p- did it there. And then they had two guys after it was done, play Pong and Snake, and it was not the same Pong and Snake. So it wasn't just like a recording, right? It was totally legit. And he basically, what this guy's done is he's reprogrammed, basically, through these controller ports only, he programmed the Super Nintendo to do something else. Well, plus the Mario cartridge, right? Think about how crazy that is. Like... He didn't, you know, open up a dev kit or recompile anything or anything. All he did was literally push buttons on controllers. Imagine if you could push buttons on your game, your Xbox controller, and you're when you're playing Halo, and you just push enough buttons that you've somehow loaded in all of Counter Strike through the controller port, and then the Xbox starts playing Counter Strike. This is off the hook. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I don't think it's ever. This might be the first time ever. Any game has been reprogrammed through the controller ports alone. This is incredible. Like, I'm not even really sure what I would say about this. There's nothing to say about it. It's just it is what it is. I've always, like, thought about... I've thought about this in the past, like, once or twice. Like, could it be possible? And I was... And I was... The only way I could see it being possible would be if somehow the game had, like, an interpreter in it and let you, like, you know, enter... You know, something like that. But I guess he... You know, was able to, I, I don't know. But yeah, the eight controllers to enter the data real fast. You know, this, this and cur- the current uh, state of speedruns basically illustrates a greater point we can talk about someday in depth on Geek Nights. In the modern world, no matter what your thing is, stepping up your game will never get you close to the people who have stepped up their game. Unless you are 
So the only person stepping up your game in that area. Either be a generalist who's or really good at a lot your, of things. Or you step up your game a hundred times, just like these guys. Yeah, if you're a gamer, for example, you've either got to be good at all games in a general sense, like Ian M. Banks, player of games, good at games, or you've got to pick one game. Yeah, I mean, look, the people who become truly famous, right, in this world are people who max out one thing to the, you know, sacrificing other things, right? Like Michael Jordan, basketball only. Uh, Baseball. Well, yeah, but (laughs) that didn't go so well, right? Tiger Woods, golf only his whole life, pretty much, right? If you want to be that kind of somebody... You have to sacrifice all your other things, and that's why we are nobodies, because we do too many things. Yeah, we have not quit our jobs to do Geek Nights full-time. Geek Nights would be a lot better if we did this full-time. I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but... uh, We do many, many things. I like to to go to beaches and fuck around, play Nidhogg. Oh, all right. (laughs) Let's let's meta moment. All right, meta moment. The book club book is... Aiduru by William Gibson. I finished reading it. Thank God. Next next Thursday. Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that means I got to pick a new book. Uh, so in the time it took you to read Aderu, I read it again because I'd already read it in the past. And then I read three uh, culture books. In the time that you were reading three culture books, I played many games of Netrunner. Yep. So I know a lot about the culture now. And uh, seriously, if you didn't read Player of Games from our previous book club before, read that fucking book. Seriously. Because the rest of the culture books are great. But I think that one stands apart. <laughs> I picked the right one. No, because that one tells one story. Uh, all the other ones, all the other ones, you have to already care about the culture and be like, man, I wonder what's up with the culture. No, I don't know. Other, what's the the, sec- the one that I didn't finish reading? Consider Flebus. Yeah, that one only told one story. The moral, yeah, the moral of that one. It, no, it tells two stories. The moral of that one is you're fucked. Ah. <laughs> the moral of use of weapons is weapons suck. You're fucked. Well, I know that. Yeah. You don't have to tell me that. I don't need a book. No, the moral of that one is you are a weapon. Yes, that's also true. Yep. Ideas are weapons. Everything's a weapon. That is well known. Yep. Book not needed. Message received. Yep. So far, the message of look to windward data. is the culture is just awesome. <laughs> and it really sucks to live anywhere else. Also did not need more than one book to know that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But the degree to which it is better. Anyway, <laughs> so I guess I got to pick my book. Uh, uh, how about other meta moment things? Uh, we got a fuck ton of videos on the internet. And you should watch them. Yeah. We're going to Anime Boston. Uh, I got to submit the rest of my panels. I haven't submitted all my panels yet. Got to go to PAX East. East. We're going to be doing some panels there. We don't know what ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, not going to announce yet because I'm not sure if we're doing one or two. And I don't zero. Know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's zero, then I guess we're just enforcing. So come and play games. At least we're enforcing. We're guaranteed to get in no matter what. That's for sure. Thank the gods. Thank Glob. Thank Glob. Uh, what else we got going on? Our forum is actually really rocking again. So if you had joined our forum in the past and it slackened away, the forum is new, improved costing us money to be new and improved (laughs) and is way better in every way. There's lots of stuff going on in there. In fact, pretty much every place that exists on the internet where people can socialize and connect and publish and share and do that sort of stuff, Geek Nights is there. So come and look for us on the internet. Kineticon, submit your goddamn panels. They've been open for months. Well, I'm starting to schedule stuff, guys. Also, if you want to go to Kineticon... No reason not to buy a badge right now because it's going to be way cheaper. It's way cheaper. Are they even and selling badges now? The they, more they sell them way in advance. The more you buy, guys buy badges now, the more I can try to get some budget to do cooler shit. Also, I'm not sure of this, right? But they have those Connecticut member appreciation days at the tournament center. Yeah. Uh, if, if you, you buy a badge, if you, you can buy start a badge going. for this year, but you haven't even gone to a Connecticut yet, you can still go to those, right? Yes, and you know what? Those things are really awesome. If you live anywhere near Hartford, yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's in Hartford. I think it's in. It's in Connecticut. It's I, in Connecticut. Connecticut is if you're one a big Connecticut blur nerd, of the nerd Parkway. Like, like if you're a nerd in Connecticut, basically, right? Where are you going to go to play, you know, Magic or any other sort of nerdy tabletop game? Or just, like, watch anime with people. Basically, Kineticon is your local anime and gaming club if you live anywhere near Connecticut. Pretty much. Uh, So there's a Connecticut Con tournament center that is, like, a you know, all-year-round gaming place. Also, Kineticon's board gaming tabletop content is literally the the best best non-PAX, non-MAGFest gaming con there is. Yes. In the U.S., 
Yes. I was <laughs> I'm not and in terms of tabletop library, it's probably the best. Oh my god, the tabletop library there. Though Magfest is much better now that Cold Guy commits basically his entire. I still personal think Kineticon's library. library is greater than Cold Guy's library. Not that Cold Guy has bad tasting games. Just I mean, Kineticon is. He has bigger. a fuck ton of games, but he doesn't have that many. Well, games. he is but a man. That's Kineticon what I'm saying. Is an organization. That's right. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna start ramping up the Kineticon panels, workshops, special events stuff. Is there anything else in the calendar <laughs> at all? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Stuff. Do your geeky thing. So, yeah. Uh, Space Dandy. Space Dandy. Space Dandy is the anime that many people are saying saved anime, along with Kill Who la Kill. Who is Space Dandy? Space Dandy is a dandy in space. A dandy guy in the space? So... People have been anticipating the show for a long time. Because mostly it's made by the Cowboy Bebop people. Yep, and it has and some superficial stylistic elements that are reminiscent of Cowboy Bebop. But and are it's equally, in space. But they're equally reminiscent of Lupin the Third. The money, well, Cowboy Bebop was as well. Yeah, that's the, bad. The money, the money is Wulong's, uh, so it might be the same universe in the distant future. I'm or, assuming it's the same universe. Right. Uh, also... It is airing on Adult Swim Cartoon Network. In fact, it airs in the U.S. before it airs in Japan. Is there a Space Dandy dubcast set yet? Yeah, it's dubbed on TV. I don't know. I haven't watched it on TV. Yeah, no. We watched it on the internet where it's subbed. There were some minor complaints with the dub, as there are with all dubs, whatever. Yeah. Well, I, then I know. I realized recently that we always kind of talk about the Cowboy Bebop dub as being one of the greatest dubs of anime ever done. Mm -hmm. Even though it pales before, I don't know, dubbing that happens for real movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, why does anime fuck this up? But I've found on the internet that a lot of people really hate the Cowboy Bebop dub. What's wrong with it? It's not anime enough. Okay. They like that anime bullshit dub that they're so used to. That it doesn't sound enough like anime. I found... Oh, so they don't like the Cowboy Bebop dub because it's better and they like the other shitty dubs? Yeah, that it doesn't have shitty? people who talk like this all the time! Oh. Yeah. I thought it was just people who are typically sub fans. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> the sub fans hate it for their own reasons. Okay. They hate it because it doesn't have the right cast, all as right. in the original Japanese cast. Sure. And they also quietly uh, back away when you try to point out that Mushroom Samba's sub, uh, the Japanese uh, voice acting in that is kind of bullshit. <laughs> When is it? But I digress. Space Dandy. It's hard to really describe Space Dandy without just telling you what happens. I mean, I'm not even sure what happened in this show. Oh, so, so let's much. recap. In episode one, the entire ca main cast okay, was so, killed. Well, okay, so the main premise is a guy, Space Dandy, who is way dandy. Right, he's so he's sort of like a combination of you know it turns a cowboy bebop right. He's a combination of Spike and the cowboy guy, and, and but then, also Lupin. Well, uh, Lupin is already in Spike. That's like saying yeah, yeah there's milk in this butter. You know what? <laughs> like, yeah. One way you could put him is imagine he kind of like how Andy in uh, Cowboy Bebop was almost an imagining of what someone like Spike could have been without tragedy mm. in his past. Space Dandy is without tragedy and without forethought. Yeah. Living so, in a moment. So wackiness level is way high, right? Uh, and the other aspects are toned down a bit. So this guy, uh, Dandy, he's is got a butt man. That's very important. He is a yeah. butt man. Only amateurs are into boobs. Right. So he's a space guy in a spaceship, right? Much like Spike was and whatnot. But he's not bounty hunting. See, butts? He's doing something similar. He is looking for rare aliens. So any alien, I mean, it's basically, it's, it must be, if it's in the Cowboy Up universe with Wulongs and whatnot, it's in a distant future or far away place. Well, it can't be that far away from Earth because I actually mentioned Earth. So it's in a distant time in the future, right? Um, so there's all kinds of alien races, unlike in Cowboy Bebop where there's just humans, right? Um, and there's so many alien races all over the place. There's more than Star Wars. It is insane how many different aliens there are. So, and there's tons and tons of aliens. Like, like the aliens are all like the background shots in Red Line. Right. So, this guy, Dandy, he is trying to basically find alien species that are extremely rare or perhaps even undiscovered. And if he brings them to the alien registration place, he gets mad monies if he does that. Now... He's nominally doing this to get money, and I think the only thing he spends money on is food at the space equivalent of Hooters. Right, uh, which is called boobies. <laughs> so that seemed dumb, and I was like, really? Boobies? But then we get this panning shot, and you see the boobies space platform in the distance, and it's just two gigantic boobs. Yes. The show. 
So, yeah, this is where the boobies come in. Uh, the one thing I have with boobies, how come all the girls at boobies are human girls? Why aren't there alien girls at boobies who are not humanoid There was that way? one fish girl. Sure, but she was a humanoid body with boobies, right? How yeah. come there are? How, can, maybe how he's, come? Maybe he's on the humanoid floor, right. or maybe no. Boobies how come chain? the other aliens are on the same floor who are not humanoids? You're telling me all the non. How do you know there are other restaurants called Egg Sacks? Sure, but how come the non-humanoid aliens, men, we uh, we presume, right? I can least, tell you why. Or these people of a sexuality desiring women are hanging out at boobies, looking at. Humanoid boobies. I can tell you why. And, and liking them. I can tell you why. Has the has the alien uni- far distant universe like media like promoted you know human shape as the ideal form of beauty? So now like alien women can't get laid because all the alien dudes only want to go with human ladies. I will tell you why. If I am alive in a future where there are aliens and cool stuff. I would probably check out an alien strip club just to see what the deal was with their equivalent of if they have females. Sure, but this didn't look like tourists were coming through for their one time looking at the humans. Uh, I mean, maybe there's all these other floors. We really don't know. That is not the part of the world that and they've explored. And it's called boobies. Yet. It is called boobies. <laughs> so. Maybe it's a theme restaurant, like check out the humans and their boobies. Uh-huh. Sure. Because most of the clients, I mean, you got a pretty thin uh, explanation there. The reason it's wait, 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 is wait, wait. Humans so are watching the show. My explanation <laughs> of something in Space Dandy is, th- I think Space Dandy is thin. Sure. So that one, th- I don't think he's actually trying to find rare aliens because he fucking doesn't ever. Well, I mean, how many bounties does Spike catch? But he doesn't even try. He, he just, tried. No, he doesn't. A he little just bit. Fucking, he just kind of walks. And he even went to the alien registration place. Yeah, kind. he just kind of walks in the direction and stuff happens to him. And he's super competent. He reacts to things in a Spike Spiegel level of oh, like... Okay, sometimes he does, but other times he gets like in an Inspector Gadget situation where he totally fucks up, but it ends up succeeding. Yeah. In the first episode especially, like so, during like action scenes, he would like go, oops, and then somehow he'd beat the bad guy with that oops move. Totally so Inspector Gadget. He has a robot who seems to be referred to as a she who the, just The robot hangs is out smart and vacuums. And way out of date. It's like a crappy version of Bimo. Yeah. A kind of pissed off version of Bimo. Yeah. But we've seen Bimo pissed off. And then he meets this Beetlejuicean because he's stupid. But the Beetlejuicean is actually stupid. Yeah. And he... It's just kind of an otaku pervert nerd. In a cat body? But he's beautifully animated. <laughs> uh, most of the things are beautifully animated. I know. This show is so beautiful to watch. And the designs of all the aliens are really unique. And and the attention to detail on the facial expressions. Right. And these three jackasses just basically the, the meow... The, the cat guy joins the ship because he's like, oh, I know where some aliens are. And then he just like randomly points at some spot on the space map. He's like, they're there. Mm-hmm. And Space Dandy's like, really? Okay. And they go there and they almost die. And then at the end of the episode, they get trapped and Space Dandy's like, QT, use the thing. So QT's like, okay. And he hits the button. He's like, what's the thing do? He's like, self-destruct. And then they all die. And that's the end of the episode. And the beginning of the next episode, they don't even mention that. Yeah. Well, so... So here's the other thing. There's bad guys. And There's a plot thread that's contiguous that doesn't actually directly involve Space Dandy. Exactly. It's like meta to him. So there are these bad guys. And how do we know they're bad guys? Because they are so obviously stereotypically designed as bad guys. So Commodore Perry, who is just a giant flaming floating skull. Huh, and it's a Japanese-made show, and the guy's named Commodore Perry? <laughs> Interesting. And Dr. Gell, who I think is one of the pirates in One Piece. Right. And then there's the guy on the TV screen, who I guess is the Emperor, who I'm pretty sure is a flaming skull. And... What the fuck is better than a flaming skull? Well, that's skull? Commodore Perry. Nothing. Flaming skulls are the best. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if uh, he's a distant relative of Infernal Cop. It doesn't matter. My favorite. He's my favorite guy now because he's a flaming skull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all flaming skulls good. And Ghost Rider, while awesome, is probably the worst of all flaming skulls. So that tells you how good flaming skulls are. So the meta plot are. is <laughs> Commodore Perry, the flaming skull, ordered Dr. Gell, the, uh, the One Piece villain, to find Space Dandy. And kill him, supposedly. Or something. We, we don't know why. Because Space Dandy has the We thing. don't even know that these are bad guys. The only thing we know is that they look like uh, bad guys and act like bad guys. What we know is if that We don't know their ship, motivation at all. They could be doing this to save the universe. What we know is that their ship is a giant Statue of Liberty head with a ball gag. We do know that. What is it with these new anime and ball gags? 
I mean, Gomagori's uh, alt- ultra. Well, Gomagori actually has an explanation for that. He does have an explanation. The for Statue that. of Liberty is just, I guess, stylistic. Whatever. I wonder if that is actually the Statue of Liberty. It could, I it could possibly be, but that would give us a really good idea of how big that ship is, which is not that big because the Statue of Liberty's head is not that big. Yep. So, so I get it's not the Statue of Liberty because <laughs> you could not make a spaceship out of something that small. Well, you could make it walk through Manhattan. The Statue of Liberty in its entirety could maybe make a small spaceship for humans that was like a real spaceship. We don't know how many people are on that ship. But the Statue of Liberty's head alone could not make a giant space-faring vessel that had an entire fleet around it, of which it was the biggest ship. So, episode one ends with our entire cast being killed by a self-destruct device and begins with these guys trying to find the space dandy. Episode two... These guys are trying to find the Space Dandy again, Mm -hmm. and Space Dandy's personality is completely 180. Now, he's a boob man, and he's not into butts anymore. Yep. And I I almost think that's relevant. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, based on only two episodes of information, is that basically... He can't die. It's like a Kenny from South Park situation, right? He's like this invincible guy... And he has some effect on the universe, right? This crazy shit happens to him. He seems to luck out, whatever. And this is why they're trying to hunt him down. But he doesn't know it about himself, right? He doesn't know anything that he's special or whatever. I think him and everyone around him literally cannot die, but don't remember anything that happens to them. Yeah. It's, QT seems to remember and seems to be vaguely the, pissed off about yeah, things. The real plot is some sort of meta thing that, you know, like that. Some, something along those lines... Uh, and the bad guys know it, and the robot seems to know it, but Space Dandy doesn't have enough memory or coherence himself, and uh, neither does the meow thing, really. Um, so it's sort of like, you know, you're just sort of watching it from the wrong perspective to understand what's really happening. And it's going to get crazy serious, perhaps, oh, yeah, when so, the uh, truth is revealed, but uh, maybe not that serious. Dandy and Meow died again in the second episode, and Meow died, I think, twice. Yeah, they died when they were, like, ejected into the vacuum of space, but then they were alive at the end of the episode. They just... Yeah, but th- every time they die, like, the next cut is just everyone fine again. Yep, they don't even... And there's it's large time skips. Not super large, like, months, but super large, like, shit could have happened in between there and there that was not explained and could be important. And everyone around Space Dandy, like all the people who get noticed, are badasses in some sense and seem to be secret agents of some kind. Yep. And seem to be against Dr. Gal and Commodore Perry. Well, it doesn't seem like anyone even knows Gal and Perry exist. Um, but, but they fought off the guys who were after Space Dandy. Sure, but, they, you know, I don't know. You know what? There's nothing else to say. Watch your show. If you're an anime fan, this is the show to be watching if you're not already watching Kill yeah. La Kill. Yeah, I don't think, though, I mean, you know, in terms of the promise of the show, it was going to save animes, just like the promise of all these other shows. I don't think Space Dandy alone would have saved any anime. No, but, well, here's the thing. <laughs> At well, least not based on two episodes. There's worth. three waves Kill here. Kill Kill, the first episode, that was enough, right? Madoka saved anime for people who are Madoka, deeply into anime right. and paid attention yeah. to Madoka anime Madoka saved anime in three episodes, so we have to give Space Danny at least one more. What I'm saying is that Kill La Kill brought a lot more people who were more far-flung in anime fandom back into anime. Space Dandy is the kind of thing you could show on TV and someone who doesn't watch anime be like, what the fuck is yeah, this? Yeah, at the Netrunner meetup, right, there's, you know, some people who are, uh, you know, nerdy. and other People aren't just in a Netrunner there. <laughs> Shocking, right? Uh, so, you know, some animes came up and, like, three people were like, Space Dandy, all shit. See? And that, that was at, with a time when there had only been one episode and, and they, they would tell me, like, yeah, I really only watch anime like on Cartoon Network or whatever, but they were like, holy shit, that show, that was, and they were like, mm. So the people who are, you know, the quote casual anime fan who aren't crunchy rolling or fan subbing, right? They're into this. It's, it's a, it is a hit with them. Well, I get the impression because this is the kind of show that if I just showed one episode of this to my dad, he would probably watch the rest of it. Maybe. I mean, good chance. So, Watch a show. Especially if he's a boob and or butt man. Anime fans, it's... I don't know what else to say because I don't know where this show is going. I mean, if you're watching some crappy other show, if right, you're watching, if you're watching, if you have, ti- if you have time, Sama, blah blah blah, not technically my then sister. Then you have time. If you have time to watch that shit, you have time to watch this. Yeah, because it's not. You know, it is remains to be foreseen 
the exact quality of this show overall, you know, we, that is yet to be determined. But I guarantee it's better than all those. I mean, I'm watching Yoa Pedal. If I can watch Yoa Pedal, I can watch Space Dandy. Yeah. My life has entered the sort of golden age, like this renaissance of watching animation. Because right now, look, Adventure Time started again. Archer started again. Uh, I'm Venture Brothers is kind of on hiatus. I got Space Dandy. I got Kill La Kill. I got Silver Spoon. I got so much animation You to know watch. what you just reminded me of? Huh? So uh, on uh, Cartoon Hangover, they posted a video. They interviewed one Yonan Vasquez. I saw that. Because, do you know why they interviewed him? Not because he just stopped in the office, although he did. Because I'm assuming that they're bringing his shit back. No. No? He is writing an episode of Bravest Warriors. Right, I didn't even mention Bravest Warriors, which I fell behind on. I gotta watch the rest of it. And you know what's not in that episode? Grr. Catbug. Oh. And he was like, there's no Catbug, don't hate me. What? I hate him now. (laughs) Catbug. He said he likes Catbug, but he didn't put Catbug in his episode, so, yeah. Catbug is like 10 BMOs Also, worth of now when I know what that guy looks like, he's younger than I thought. I thought he was older. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's problematic because I'm watching so many shows suddenly, not even counting uh, uh, House of Cards, that it's cutting into my time for other stuff like playing games. Mm, you know what show I've been watching lately? Uh? Uh, CBS... NFL football. Uh, yeah, Fo- I, yeah, I said shows. NFL on Fox. Yeah, you know what I almost did? I almost bought tickets to the Red Wings Rangers game at MSG. How much I, was that? I be? found tickets. How much was it? So I had legit tickets. I could have got. I almost just did it. How two much tickets, were they? They were next to each other, in section two. They were great seats. They were four hundred and thirty dollars each. That's about right. Yeah, I almost just bought them. <laughs> Listen, I want if of all the sporting events that then I, I realized could go for the cost to, of that, I could fly to Istanbul and separately watch a minor league hockey game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I decided not to buy the tickets. <laughs> uh, of all these sporting events in the world that I could go to, I would choose first to go to Madison Square Garden. I have not been there. I have I've been never to seen Ma- a thing there either. I have been to. I have been there in my life, but I haven't been there in with my own money. I've never seen hockey there. <laughs> I've, I've seen hockey there once. I should just. I got. I've I been there to total hockey. three times. I've. Thing is, if I go to, MSG, I went to Madison Square Garden when I was very young to see Sesame Street live. I, went, I saw that at Cobo Hall. I went there and saw the circus, and I went there and saw hockey. Ah. Uh, I feel like, though, I'm not going to buy If I'm going to go see a hockey game at MSG, it's going to be like Stanley Cup something. I'm going to pay like $1,000. For that, I'll just go see the Super Bowl. I kinda, I've kind of. i never been to a Super Bowl. I kinda you never that will too. be. I had, a, I had a line on tickets, but they were, they were shall we say, pricey. <laughs> How and many thousands? Uh, actually Five? Three? Three. Three, three. three? Three's about right. It was right. a little over $3,000. Yeah, but you're sitting in the top deck for three. No, it was a little lower than that. It was two seats, 3000 each, not for both. Yep. But they were one seat apart. For that amount of money, the camera equipment we could buy to make videos. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Actually, you know, getting back into meta stuff, stay tuned because Scott and I kind of agree that it's time for a stepping up of game because we've, we've cast... Are making video content feelers in a lot of directions. Well, also at the aforementioned CES, the camera that I've been waiting to buy was at least shittily, fakely teased by taking another camera and putting a sticker on it. Yeah. So uh, eventually, a camera that isn't just an old camera with a sticker on it will be made and produced supposedly within some months, and I will buy it. Scott and, then- and I are of agreement that we've, we've cast all these seeds out. We did, you know, we did that pony show, and then we did Geek Nights Presents, which we're going to keep doing. Don't worry. We've just been on hiatus for a while, and Scott's been doing his net runner, and we've been practicing with streaming, and uh, some of those things look like a correct path, so we're both willing to spend money to step up the game. All right. So anyway. Stay tuned. I gotta go home. And watch Space Dandy. I'm so hungry, I'm gonna die. Especially because this episode of Space Dandy was all about ramen. I'm, I'm not hungry. Oh my god. When, I when, ate Indian food. When that fucking cat ate Space Dandy's ramen, and he's got the Naruto like stuck to his cheek... Like he didn't even care, and then it just fell on the ground, and he didn't eat it. I thought. Listen, I li- at least in the episode there was a reversal, so it evened out. Yeah, yeah. Fuck him. Yep. Seriously, that cat guy is kind of a really. He's a he's a bad dude, <laughs> but not in the bad dude sense. Like he could really. I, he could be in league with the bad guys. Uh, I think he's just dumb. 
It's either way is equally likely. <laughs> well, I just went to Wikipedia. One of Space Dandy's partners, Meow, is a dim-witted cat-like alien. Yes, that is correct. That about sums him up. All right, I'm going. All right. Out. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. know what the problem is and she said i want to know what the problem is so i can get the problem fixed i said you don't want to know what the solution to the problem is and you don't want to know what your problem is she says how do you know that i'm not gonna like it i said i know you're not gonna like it so she said just tell me what it is and i'll tell you if i like it and i said maybe Maybe I'll tell you. She said, why won't you tell me? I said, the problem's your ass. She said, what? I said, the problem's your ass. She said, what? I said, the problem's your fucking ass. Your ass is all fucked up and you got problems with your ass. She said, why are you saying this to me? And I said, it's your fucking problem. You're the one with the fucked up ass. She started to storm out, so I said, wait. She said, what? I said, wait. She said, what? Is this about my ass? And I said, no. Kind of. Your ass is mad fucked up and you don't want to face the problem. She said, what's your problem? I said, my problem is that you come in here with a fucked up ass and you don't want someone to tell you that your ass is fucked up. I don't even know how you go to the bathroom. I don't even know how you sit on things. When you stand up, where does your ass go? Where was your ass in the first place? Where was your ass in 1969? Where was your ass on 9-11? I thought you said you'd never forget. She said, I'm leaving. And I said, not before you get your official diagnosis. Here it is. You're fucked up and your ass is fucked up. Are you ready for the solution? She said, what? And I said, here's the solution. Are you ready? Yeah, I'll it. Yeah. Sure. 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 Sure.